Hello, I'm Irma Baker. Welcome to our show. Our guest today is one of our favorites, Mark Ludwig from the Medina County Park District. And Mark is a naturalist there. Mark, it's so great to have you with us again. Thanks for inviting me. Well, first thing, we've had you on so many times. It's always a pleasure to have you back. I don't think I've ever asked you, what is a naturalist? That's a common question that we get <laughs> asked a lot. <laughs> uh, basically, it's I'm in charge of programs uh, for the public and schools and do research projects and all kinds of different things. So it's a fun job. <laughs> well, what qualifies somebody to be a naturalist? Um, just going to college, uh, getting uh, the background in biology usually, or I mean, there's a number of fields too. Um, but then just years of experience, uh, volunteering. I actually started out uh, at the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, <laughs> uh, volunteering a lot and then getting seasonal jobs and then finally a permanent job uh, opened up. Um, I always get the question from my parents, you know, they're like, so a naturalist, is that a volunteer uh, position? <laughs> like, no, I actually get paid for it. So it's a great, uh, it's a wonderful job. Well, it's always great to have you with us, and certainly the knowledge that you've shared with us over the times that you've been with us has been just great. And I understand today we're going to be talking about bird migration. Yes, yes. It's, um, bird migration is just one of those just amazing things in life, like how does this happen? <laughs> how do these birds travel thousands of miles and know where to go <laughs> each year? So, yeah, we're going to be talking a lot about that today. I think it's not only how do they know where to go, but why do they go? Why, yeah. why really do birds migrate? That's, that's a great question. Um, a lot of people think it has to do with, uh, we ask the, the kids a lot of times and even adults, they say, oh, well, it's, you know, the, the weather gets too cold and they <laughs> say they need to go, you know, down south to where it's warmer, uh, kind of like I guess people do sometimes. <laughs> Um, but for birds, it's, it's all about food. Um, it's really, if you think a lot of birds like warblers, uh, they eat a lot of flying insects, and there's not a lot of insects flying in the winter, so they go down south to where uh, they find food. Um, also, it's uh, up north, it's less competition, so if every, if every bird stayed down south, <laughs> it would have a lot more competition for breeding grounds, and so as they uh, migrate up north uh, during the summer, it's just more opportunity for them. So they don't overpopulate the south when uh, they go yeah, to the south? Correct, yeah, it's just they wouldn't be able to survive. Um, mm -hmm. and, they, and it's estimated that out of uh, about 10,000 bird species that about 4,000 migrate. So it's about 40% of, uh, of birds migrate, which is pretty amazing. Oh, that must be millions and millions yes. of birds. Yep. Um, and uh, in really uh, quickly, uh, some fun um, facts about bird migration. Uh, the, the coolest one, I guess, is the Arctic tern. I don't have a picture of, <laughs> um, but, it's, but it actually migrates uh, 49,000 miles in a year. <laughs> it, it goes from, the, uh, from Antarctica uh, to where it spends the winter to the breeding grounds in the Arctic, so, and then back again. So they say in its lifetime, which could be up to 30 years, uh, that's about three trips to the moon and back again. <laughs> oh my gosh, all so I can that's... think of is those wings flapping yes. yep. for all those miles. For all those miles. Um, some birds, a lot of times when they're flying over water, it's, it's nonstop. And, uh, and one of the longest uh, ones without stopping is, is called a godwit bird. Uh, it actually 7,000 miles without stopping, which is, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> How um, long does it take? Uh, the bird to fly for that many miles? It, uh, that's a good question. Um, some, I, I know there's a snipe that actually travels uh, 4,200 um, uh, miles and at uh, speeds of 60 miles an hour. So, <laughs> so maybe uh, days, I, I would say it would take. Um, but, but yeah, it's amazing that they can fly nonstop for that long. It really seems that you know, when I think of a bird, unless I'm thinking of a, a large bird, I think of them as being very fragile. Yep. And for them to have that kind of endurance and stamina it's is just phenomenal. Amazing. I mean, when you think of a hummingbird uh, that migrates to, to Central uh, America, and I mean, it weighs six grams, or I'm sorry, three grams. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, so it's not even, I mean, it's so light and there's not much, you know, to it. And the fact that it can migrate that that far is, is amazing. Do they use the um, 
the wind as to help sure. them along? Sure, a lot of uh, birds, they, they find where the wind is heading north or something, I guess tailwind, I believe it's called, uh, and they, they basically, yeah, they, the wind helps them. So, it's, so they're kind of uh, know when these weather fronts are coming through these, uh, and it and definitely helps them with, the, uh, with migration. And, and it's interesting to know, uh, like, uh, how, do they, how do they know where to go is always the question. Like, how do they know, like, the young that are born this year uh, from, like, a warbler species? And where, where do they, how do they know? Uh, and something in their brain tells them it's uh, some kind of like a GPS uh, <laughs> location in their brain telling them exactly where to go. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, but also they follow um, the stars at night. A lot of birds uh, will follow stars. Um, mountain ranges, uh, even the Earth's magnetic field, they have like a little compass or iron uh, in their brain to, to be able to detect which way uh, the magnetic uh, field is going. So it's, it's pretty amazing. And most uh, birds uh, migrate at night because there's less uh, predation, so, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> oh, and when I think of birds migrating, I'm thinking of those V formations that we see, like with the geese and that. Yep. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, and migration is extremely dangerous, too. <laughs> so there's a lot of obstacles along the way. Uh, it's estimated that about, uh, there's about one billion window crashes every year so into buildings. A lot of cities now are having the, the lights out program. You probably maybe heard of Cleveland just turning some of the lights out. Uh, the, the reason why the, uh, the birds are flying into buildings is they believe it's, uh, they think they're stars. You know, the birds are thinking that they're part of the stars and flying right into them uh, or just not seeing them, not noticing mm -hmm. them. So there's a lot of window collisions uh, with buildings. What about uh, predators? Are there predators that uh, create dangers for them in sure. migration? And, that, and that's the, the big reason why they fly at night. So a lot of like hawks, for example. Um, but, but yeah, there's, there's certainly um, predators that can affect them as well. But I, I think the biggest thing is just the obstacles that are in the way. <laughs> um, some of the, the best places to see migration in our parks are probably uh, River Sticks Park. Uh, we, we do have uh, annual bird hikes that are over right now, um, but, they, but we go at six weeks and it's every Saturday morning at 7.30. Uh, and it's kind of neat to see the transition from one species of bird to the next. Uh, uh, so, so that's a great way to see the migration is just coming out to our parks. Um, one of the, also another great place is McGee Marsh that's up, up near uh, Port Clinton, uh, near uh, Toledo. And uh, it's one of the, the best birding spots in the nation to go uh, because all the birds uh, just congregate uh, together uh, before they fly over the lake, Lake Erie. So you see all these birds just everywhere. So it's just, it's amazing. Um, and uh, usually, like if there's bad weather, uh, a lot of the birds will stay lower, so you don't even need binoculars. They have a really cool boardwalk that goes through it, hmm. and uh, you get to see everything. Well, you uh, said just a moment ago about the sequence of the birds. When I think of migration, I guess there are two things I think of. I think of the, uh, the geese in yeah. their V formations in the fall and in the spring, but I also think of, you know, our world-famous buzzers sure. that return to Hinkley, but yeah. it sounds like they're one of the earliest birds that migrate, but uh, they come at different times, yep. different birds? And so we'll go to my uh, the slides that I brought right now, and first of all, we'll uh, start with this, this bird. So this is one of the earliest ones. Um, I would say uh, uh, we'd see them in March, <laughs> um, called a uh, woodcock, and uh, this is a bird that has a very unusual uh, courtship behavior <laughs> uh, in that uh, they fly uh, almost like a reverse tornado way up into the sky and then they get to a certain peak and then they actually drop back to the ground like a leaf falling and then they usually land near the same spots and make a really loud like painting sound um, to all to attract the female which is which is pretty amazing so these are one of the earlier ones uh, next we have uh, a lot of our waterfowl that come through, mm -hmm. so we do a lot of waterfowl programs as well. Um, so they're they're pretty early on, coming from uh, a lot of the southern states, uh, Atlantic coast, and migrating through. A lot of them will nest in Canada, so they fly through this area, just get this very narrow window of opportunity to see them, 
and these these ducks are beautiful. I, uh, this is a ring neck duck, uh, one of my favorite ones. Uh, almost has like a purplish uh, tint to the to the head, like an iridescent color. Yeah, I um, think I've seen those, and they do. They seem to glow. Glow. Yep, yeah, they're very vibrant colors. Um, and, and this one, I, we can talk a lot about certain species, but this particular one uh, is named ring neck duck because it has a. Um, a chestnut colored or brownish colored ring around its neck that you can't really see. Um, we always want to call this one uh, ring bill because there's a <laughs> ring around its bill. But um, so yeah, so it's a uh, ring neck duck. Uh, the next one is, uh, so now we're going through the season into, uh, into March and into April. We're starting to see some of the early migrators. So there's, like I said, a transition of different species as you go. Uh, this is the Eastern Meadowlark. Um, and it's, it's uh, pretty early on, very uh, beautiful yellow colors, and this is the, uh, the sound of it. Eastern Meadowlark. So it's, it's pretty amazing when we hear these sounds, we're like, oh, it's, it's spring. <laughs> we know what time of year, because <laughs> they, they're always on schedule. They have like a, a calendar of uh, when they need to be back, and it's, it's pretty amazing. So you can follow it every year. You kind of know when, when these birds are coming. Is that calendar affected at all by whether we have sure. an early spring <clears throat> or a late spring? It's uh, certainly weather affects it as well, but it is amazing just the number of years that I've really been following bird migration that it's really the birds are just right on schedule, you know, near the nearest day, like every, every year that, or that certainly the week. Um, so they, they know that they need to get up north, <laughs> so they have a certain amount of time. Uh, we'll move to the next slide right now, and, this, and these are starting to, as time goes on, uh, these are the, this is the tree swallow, um, fly like bats, as we, we tell everybody, um, and they nest in a lot of our bo bluebird boxes that we put out uh, for bluebirds, but also tree swallows as well. Uh, next. Uh, and then the kinglets, we usually see early on some of our earlier bird hikes in April. We'll see huge flocks of all kinds of different uh, kinglets that... Uh, okay, I have to say, I've never uh, sure. heard of a kinglet. Yep, they, they are a tiny bird uh, that uh, moves really fast, so, <laughs> so you really need to be at the right place at the right time to see them. But, um, but they have a really cool uh, golden, it's where they get their name, or yellowish uh, crown on top of their head. But most of them are just passing through to to north uh, to the north uh, to nest in Canada. Next, the rose-breasted uh, grosbeak is probably one of my favorite uh, songs. Rose-breasted grosbeak. A lot of people, if they have feeders out, um, if they're near forest, a lot of times they may get these to their uh, bird feeders. So very, very beautiful, uh, vibrant red colors of the male. Uh, the female is actually brown, <laughs> so uh, not as vibrant as the male. But um, Well, that really, uh, what you play, the, um, the song, the sound of the bird, that seems to be what we hear, yep. for instance, in oh, movies, TV, yep. when they want to do a bird call, that seems to be what they use. Yep, so, so the, the birds are um, essentially, when they get to their breeding grounds, they're, they're calling. So it's a, a territorial thing. Mostly it's the, the males that are doing the calling. Um, and it's saying, hey, this is where I live, and then also looking for a mate as well. So <laughs> um, there's uh, ex examples of like cardinals uh, where they actually, actually the female sings more or than the male, they say, <laughs> especially when she's on the nest. But, but generally, it's the males establishing their territory mm -hmm. and, uh, and then also looking for a female. A lot of birds that are coming through that are uh, nesting north generally uh, don't sing as much because they're not really establishing their territories. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you will will hear them, but a lot of times it's when they're on their breeding grounds where they have to establish their territories, which is, is kind of interesting. The, the gross peak that you just heard is, um, it, it, I always say, a lot of birds sound like a, a robin, uh, which is, I don't have a, a, a song of a robin, but, uh, but basically we hear them all around us. They nest in our neighborhoods, but it's more of like a cheery me, uh, cheerio, cheery me sound. Um, I always have like a phrase, a catchy phrase, or what they call mnemonics, 
um, of, of, of tr trying to remember bird songs. So that's, so I'm going to teach you a lot of the mnemonics today of, of birds so you can remember because <laughs> uh, it gets very confusing, especially when it gets to the warblers. I'm still trying to learn warbler calls. Uh, the next bird, uh, and actually this is, uh, I forgot I put maps in here of where they uh, migrate to. So this one is uh, Central America and in, in, uh, the top of uh, South America. So you can see that they're, um, they, a lot of these birds are coming from, like I said, uh, down, way down south. Um, so the next slide is, is another really uh, beautiful bird that we have around this area called a scarlet tanager. The rose-breasted grosbeak, um, I was saying with the robin, says cheerio, cheery me. Rose-breasted grosbeak, uh, we say it's a robin that took voice lessons. Um, <laughs> this is a, uh, sounds like a robin with a sore throat. So. Scarlet tanager. And uh, the next one, and, and we do have a migration um, map of this one, you'll see in the, in the next slide, but uh, Baltimore Oriole is, uh, is also one of my uh, favorite birds, just absolutely beautiful uh, orange color. And if you, if you think you hear somebody whistling, this is the, uh, this is the Oriole. Baltimore Oriole. So it sounds like a person whistling. <laughs> They like uh, uh, jelly, so it seems, and in oranges, if you slice an orange in half. So uh, my, my parents actually have, they live near uh, a forest and they, they feed these birds every day and it's amazing, they're in every day, bring the whole family to the, <laughs> to the jelly. Uh, it seems what they like, the grape jelly um, without any seeds. But, um, but yeah, it's, it, they're absolutely amazing, uh, just beautiful birds. Uh, and this is the, the scarlet tanager, the migration map. Uh, the Oriole is actually very similar to this as well. So Central South America is where they're going. Um, a bobolink is very interesting in that, um, in that it migrates all the way to Argentina. So, <laughs> and they, uh, they're actually at our Wolf Creek Environmental Center out in our fields where they nest. Uh, and it's a really uh, very quickly that they, that they nest. I mean, it's, they, they come back in, uh, towards um, uh, beginning of May, and and they're done, you know, by like mid mid June, if not sooner, and back on their way to Argentina. So it's uh, uh, it's amazing how far that these these birds can travel. Bobo Lake. Very interesting song, almost like a like a bubbly uh, <laughs> um, a song sound to it. It sounds like a person chattering. Yeah, a chattering <laughs> sound. <laughs> and this, uh, this bird has, a, the bobolink has the reversed coloration too, I forgot to say. Um, and now we, and then as time goes on into May, first week of May, second week of May, we start to get into our warblers. And I, uh, out of any of the birds pictured uh, in, the, in the slideshow, I have mostly warblers. But uh, these are, we'll go through these uh, pretty fast. This is the American red start, pretty orange and black uh, coloration. And keep in mind that these birds weigh what, half an ounce, so they they're tiny, tiny birds. When uh, when you say a tiny bird, compare it to something so we get an idea. Sure, um, like gold goldfinch size, um, if not smaller. So everybody's probably familiar with a goldfinch. We usually see those at our feeders a lot. So. Um, so yeah, really, the amazing thing is when you see them up close, it is just amazing how tiny they are. Um, and uh, so yeah, really, really small. We'll go to our next slide, which is, um, and actually this is showing you the migration route is one, once again, Central South America. And then the next slide, uh, Magnolia Warbler, uh, very, very beautiful uh, yellow and uh, grayish color. Um, and we'll go to the next one, uh, Prothonotary Warbler. And then next slide, uh, black-throated green, which uh, this one I do have a, the call of. So when you're learning uh, warbler calls, once again, it's the mnemonics that you're trying to remember. Um, this particular one is Z Z Z Zo Z. So <laughs> black-throated green warbler. So yeah, if you remember those mnemonics, that, that helps with uh, learning the calls. 
um, it's very difficult because uh, a lot of times you hear them. And like I said, I'm still learning uh, the, the calls. But, but if, you, if you remember a phrase, a catchphrase, or the, like I said, the mnemonics, um, it helps you remember it. And uh, usually you know, it'll say, oh, there's a, we're looking at a, a black-throated green warbler and up in the tree, and it's uh, Z, 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 and people look at me like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, that's what it says. <laughs> so. I'm surprised that the warblers have so many different, uh, different songs. Yeah, yep. In, in birds, yeah, in general, just uh, uh, different songs, obviously, to attract the, the spe their species. Um, so I guess if every bird has had the same song, it, you know, get really confusing. <laughs> but um, but really, it just I, the ones that I mentioned or playing the songs of are very unique um, songs. Some of the other warbler songs are very similar uh, to each other. So it really mm -hmm. takes uh, a lot to try to remember them. And then uh, next we have the black-throated um, uh, 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 blue warbler. I should read the slide. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, after that, we have the cerulean warbler, which is a very pretty uh, blue color. We have them nesting in some of our parks. They're, they're pretty rare to see. Blackburnian, which is probably one of my favorite, just the beautiful orange. Mm -hmm. I, that orange color, just uh, <laughs> just vibrant, just amazing. Uh, and then next is the blue-winged, which is uh, an easier song to remember. It sounds like an insect. Blue-winged warbler. It's more of a bee buzz, bee buzz. <laughs> yeah, it is more of a buzz. It yep. doesn't really have that chirping sound to it. So we have uh, we have people they, they go out and they come back and they, with questions about I heard an insect out in the field. What uh, what is it? You know, and it's in you know uh, May, and we're like, oh, it's uh, it's a blue wing warbler. <laughs> um, the next slide that we have is a chestnut sided, and uh, this one says, uh, please, 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 please to meet you. Chestnut-sided warbler. All right, and then the next um, slide is the uh, northern perilla. Um, and then after that, like I said, there's a lot of warblers. <laughs> common yellow throat, which is uh, witchy, 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 witchy. These are these common are common yellow throat. So these, um, along with the yellow warbler, are pretty regular visitors to fields. So a lot of times if you're out in our parks and near fields, uh, you're gonna hear these. Yellow warblers are next slide, I believe. Um, and, uh, and this one's really common as well. So this is more of like a forest edge uh, that they live near on, um, as well as a field. And uh, they'll, they'll say- Yellow warbler. Right, so they're uh, sweet, sweet. I'm so sweet. <laughs> great way to, so, to great. This is how I remember the, the yeah, songs. The songs yeah. <laughs> and then this one, um, the breasted chat. So that the chat would be the next one, and I'll play it. So this one really doesn't have a mnemonic. It's all over the place. <laughs> so uh, so usually if you hear that, it's it's um, it, a lot of times it's going to be a, a chat or either a catbird makes a lot of different songs as well. Um, this is the uh, also very uh, absolutely one of my favorite birds, uh, indigo bunting, um, which is um, absolutely a beautiful blue oh. color, just very it's uh, stunning. Vibrant. That that blue is stunning. And these are uh, these are pretty common around this area too. A lot of nesting, um, uh, they they nest around this area a lot. The interesting thing is uh, this one, the painted bunting. So um, these are not uh, common in this area at all. <laughs> they are more of the southern United States. Uh, uh, Texas has a has a great population of these. And why did I put this one in there? Well, it's absolutely beautiful. You can see uh, the coloration of it. 
but um, but there sometimes there's uh, what they call accidental birds that somehow show up here. Mm -hmm. uh, so a couple of weeks ago we were in uh, Kent, Ohio, mm -hmm. <laughs> near, on the uh, near the campus, and, mm -hmm. uh, and there was actually one that showed up there. So whether it was caught in a, a storm that took it, you know, mm -hmm. far distance, or sometimes um, something in their brain just short circuits and they're not sure where mm -hmm. they where they're going or <laughs> where they wound up. So, uh, but anyways, this, that, that bird uh, happened to be in Kent. Uh, and of course we, uh, you know, should have been there five minutes earlier because it was, it was gone, unfortunately. But it was, uh, a lot of people uh, saw it. Uh, we also, uh, in the past, told you about a brambling that was from uh, Russia that showed up uh, um, mm -hmm. at uh, one of our parks, Allerdale, which, mm -hmm. you know, shouldn't be here, but accidental. So migration, you never know what you're gonna get. And our last bird, um, is the uh, the willow uh, flycatcher and then also the alder flycatcher which um, can play that willow flycatcher so so this is more of a uh, like a Fitzbue uh, call um, the alder is looks identical to the willow um, but there's a slight variation I didn't I don't have the call on here but uh, very slight variation in, in the call. So instead of saying Fitzbue, it says Fitzbue. <laughs> it's more, more of a, it extends the, the first note a lot longer than the other one. So, um, but yeah, the bird identification could be tough uh, based on the song. But, but so this, this is uh, the series of slides that you saw were basically the birds that um, came, come through. So. They come through here. Some of them stay here. Some of them continue on to Canada. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So it's it's um, yeah. Some will continue on, and others will stay here to nest. Well, I'm so glad you came and visited with us again today, and I'm sure we'll have you back again. Thank you so much, and thank you everyone for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you get out and see some of these birds around our area. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day.